We are starting precast concrete parking garages in Revit webinar. And uh, I am Valences Balsagius, and I was structural engineer, now application engineer working in AgaCAD. We create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs for the walls leading BIM practitioners. And uh, we eliminate tasks which uh, don't create value. Um, so we have the widest range of uh, true BIM software in the world for Revit professionals, uh, covering wood and metal framing, precast concrete design and MEP system design. Um, so today I will talk about this one, about precast concrete, and I will use it in Revit. Uh, we are industry partners with Autodesk. Um, you can see more information about it in Autodesk webpage. Um, we'll cover how to create elements, create connections, uh, reinforcement, how to renumber elements, and then how to create sharp drawings today, um, specifically for parking garage buildings. So we'll model elements and, and connections and generate sharp drawings, some examples, sharp drawings, and, and we will also cover some techniques to model and, and document uh, warped double T's, which is quite common in United States parking buildings. Uh, so new tool also will be presented. Uh, name of the tool is floor plus C. It will replace uh, floor plus M, which was already in precast uh, package. This tool was for metal framing layout and uh, precast or concrete um, framing elements layout in in Revit. But we want to separate that. We want to make it more clear. Uh, we want to load um, precast concrete default families. Uh, so you just load families, uh, you have some configurations and you can start using it. Uh, we'll remove unnecessary commands, which were more for steel part. And then uh, all the feature updates will be only for this tool. So uh, less confusion as well. And this is it. That's a short introduction and we will switch to <laughs> Revit. This is Revit, right? Good, so what do I have here? I have sample projects already, a lot of elements created, but still we're missing slabs and, and so on and so on. So we'll do a great job uh, further today. So on the right side, you see the tools for BIMDOC. This is uh, our solution, which you can download from our web page, and then you can install any of the tools. You see we, we have here at the bottom different tools available, uh, feminine management, the MEP guys, and then precast concrete as well, which we will be using today. So all right, precast concrete over here. I have a bunch of different tools like query number elements, query, uh, split walls, insert connections, and so on and so on. You will see how does it work. So um, now the first thing in this project, what I want to show you just quickly in one of the tools, uh, smart walls, which is uh, two split walls into panels. Uh, so for example, here I have like one wall and I, here I have separate panels and here I have many panels and here I have only one wall, the windows installed, right? So it's pretty rough de design was in the beginning and then I split them into separate panels over here, over here and still on this side I have like just one single wall which, which is easy to draw at the beginning but then later on of course we need to split that into the precast panel. So that's what I will do. I will select this smart walls tool. Um, the first thing what I will do, uh, these walls are um, joint. So I'll select this one and click on disallow joints. So first of all, I just want to separate them. And do you see uh, they are disjoint now? Uh, next, I have here a split wall menu. In the split wall menu, I have uh, split settings where I can define how to split around openings, different kind of openings, doors, windows, and so on. Then how to split um, what should be the panel size or maximum size. Again, so I have different kind of options to use with all of these commands. I don't want to 
um, spend here too much time. It's pretty straightforward, but I will show you a couple of these commands. For example, I have this kind of wall and I want to create this kind of pattern. So I will use just one command like split in the center of opening, right? So in this case, it will just split in the center of each opening what I have in this wall. And then I have other commands like to split by core face, um, to split from from start, from the end of a wall, and so on. And currently it's just like that, right? So I have these all of these panels created. Um, this one, for example, I have quite long wall here, but I want to have just three panels with some maximum size. So I'll select two walls here and I click on maximum size. So I don't want to uh, reach some maximum size, but I want to have them as uh, possible, um, just possible geometry, the same geometry, right? So I have it here, uh, the same size of panels now. These panels, uh, I would like to split them uh, at the location of columns, but I have here at the columns, I have grid lines. Right, so I can select grid lines and say I want to split by selected grids. So I do that and then I go to 3D view and I select these walls and escape on the keyboard and it will split them at the defined grid lines. So you see I have these walls now over here. It's just that uh, columns in Revit somehow joins with the wall. So what I'll do, I'll just use Revit command to unjoin them simply like that. Okay, so let's run it through them. I think it's much better now. All right, uh, next thing. Uh, so what, what I want to mention here, uh, every time I split them, I get this kind of gap, right? So here in gap configuration by wall type window, I have settings, what should be gap distance for each type of a wall. So when I do the splitting of a wall or I disallow joints, every time I get these uh, gaps. And um, these are walls, right? These are wall sy system families. So it's not parts, but separate walls. That's the way uh, we do it here. All right, so I have walls. Uh, good, um, let's move further. I want to create slabs now because I'm really missing them here. And uh, what you see here, I have only floors. Uh, floors are just rectangular floors. They have the boundaries and they have some slope line and also span direction. So span direction defines the um, slab. Yeah, actually slab direction because uh, this floor I will use as a reference to create a structural framing elements based on the uh, boundary of this floor. And for that I will use floor plus C tool, but um, so all of our tools, they are available in the dock like this, right? Or you can click um, over here and you will have all the same commands in the dock. So floor plus C, the one to create slabs. I will use it from here. So um, because it's not available here, it will be available next week. Uh, we'll add it to this tools for Vim doc. So we just run in uh, some final tests. But anyway, today I can show you how does it work. Um, right, so we have framing configurations. Right, so let's open that. Uh, first of all, uh, you define what kind of elements should be distributed here. So under longitudinal flooring, I have the type of a structural framing element. So it could be any structural framing, whatever you have actually. Uh, and I define that it should be distributed from that side with some step and some number. Then I have some settings, uh, what should be at the ends, uh, what um, we can add some holes if we want to along the uh, slabs and so on. But then we select the element, the, the reference floor, and then we link configuration to that floor. So you see, I have many types of the floors here, and then I can link uh, configuration, selected configuration to that, um, to that type of a floor. And then I do that, I can 
go ahead and click on add flooring command. So now it will read what kind of configuration should be used and it will apply that on this reference floor. Just use this as a, as a reference where to distribute a structural framing element. So now from this side I have these uh, structural framing elements distributed. You see the step over here like that and then the last piece uh, is uh, automatically the size is symmetrically reduced by the software. Uh, it could be left like this or it could be modified. I will show you a little bit later how to, to, to do it in a different way, but let's, let's see other uh, examples. Uh, actually what I want to mention also that first of all you load families. You load um, you can load families if you want to. Uh, double T's families, Holocaust families, and uh, solid families. And so I already did that before webinar, uh, so I can use them. But but basically this tool comes with these families, with double T families and Holocaust slabs, um, and you can just start using them. So here I have solid slabs, so just an, an example. And actually this is just a um, simple structural framing family which you can edit and you can modify this because this is a sweep with some profile, right? So um, again, you can use your own shape, uh, but you use this tool as a technology to distribute that and, and um, to change that. All right, and what do we have here with um, Holocaust Labs? is that uh, we have all these elements distributed and then over here I have a very narrow piece at the end and I don't want to have it. So what I will do, I will click on modify frame. So I will modify only this instance and then I will say that um, actually I want to have end connection, different elements at the end connection. For example, two of the elements, I will pick another Holocaust lab uh, I need to, to rotate it if it's on the right side, so I'm just going to click on this one as well. And then I click on OK. It should now update my floor layout. And you'll see I have now two elements here. Uh, and only then we have uh, the previous layout settings, right? So this one was moved aside. And um, the cut here is made by a software because uh, just based on the how much size do we have here. Um, but another situation here is that this one is not really good because it's uh, the wall is ending here and then this one is like we have a gap over here. So we want, I want to solve it. So I'll click on this one and do modification one more time. Modify and connection. And this time over here, I will say I want to have three elements, additional um, slab elements. And uh, also I have created modified this family and, and made it a little bit more narrow. Um, and I guess that's it. Um, so now I insert three full with slabs over here and one uh, already pre-cut slab. So this is the size of uh, this more narrow slab. And then by that I just solved uh, this uh, situation. It's now close to the wall. This this one is near to the wall, so it's okay. We can we can leave it like that. Um, so that's one of the ways. Of course, you can split that floor. You can draw draw uh, floors in a different way, uh, and then just frame them. But um, but it's also very good to just add these connections, uh, elements, additional, and and just to solve it. Right. What I'm doing here now is that what, what I want to show you that I modified this boundary and then I'll update the frame. Uh, so of course we have update and modify and delete. Like in all of our tools we always have these three options um, to solve individual places and so on. And um, what I want to mention that these families, what uh, comes with the software is uh, quite unique. They have this kind of cutouts. They, can, they are uh, cutting the last element they can cut or they can cut the ends of element, right? So you see it's following that one. If you will use just standard family from Revit, you'll have just um, straight end without a cut. So um, it, it would be better to modify these families and use them 
uh, with this tool. But for rectangular ones, of course, it's okay. All right, so that's just a couple of things, right? Uh, what I want to do now, the next thing is that, let's see um, if we have this regular floors, and now I'm just gonna um, cut out the second floor slabs. And what I will do now, I will say that I want to create slabs over here. Again, I already assigned configuration here and I have some special families uh, in this case. Uh, I want to create warped double T's here. Uh, the previous ones was a simple uh, plain slabs uh, just based on the slope and so on. And this time what I have here, you see this is reference floor, but the slabs, they are going down here. So from here, they are starting to go down and then they starting to go up. So four of my slabs, we go down and then four of them go up. And um, we have these settings to control how many of these should go up and down and what should be the slope at that end. Uh, so we can make these kind of settings in these special families. And another end will be straight, right? So that's the way uh, you can model these elements. Um, if we'll take a look to the last, one is that it's a little bit different. I just draw slabs in, in a little bit different way. So that's why these go up and then here we have like a step. So what I will do, I'll select these slabs and again I have special parameter over here to solve different kind of situations and then I click on it. Now it starts uh, to go down to that. Just um, changes the, the slope direction of the slabs. So that's also pretty good to to solve different situations uh, and so on all right and then here as well you can uh, use the same system of modification right so I, I go here I go to right hand I want to insert element then I choose to place full fifth uh, slab over here um, so one of these okay so if I'll click on OK so you see that this one was moved. Uh, it's um, already a narrow part. And um, yeah, um, let's do that one more time because I want to show you one more thing. Uh, all right, over here, let's do it like that. Uh, full width at the other edge. And then I, I can also use uh, not symmetrical, for example, right? Because previously, like the software is, um, making this one um, reduces the size of it, but it's reducing the flanges automatically. So um, it's it's still symmetrical, but if you have unsymmetrical, you can also modify like individual families, create what should be the flanges. And then, um, all right, let's do that. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, so now you see this one it has not symmetrical flanges, like this one is uh, wider than this one. Uh, but still, the slope is uh, still going a good way in the same line. Right, um, but what I want to show next. So now when I have created that, I will just remove a section box and I modified this slab so it would um, take quite a while, right? I have this one, I have that one, I need to modify and so on, uh, each of them in each floor. But to avoid that, we have multi-framing uh, command. And it can copy and uh, update frames in identical floors. So if I select this command and I click on this modified uh, slab, so it will find all the same reference floors in this model. So actually it was only three, but now in second floor, in the third floor, I already have slabs, which has um, these modified options, right? With not symmetrical one, with some um, end and slabs, which I modified previously, right? So this is pretty cool. Uh, let's create a couple of slabs, a couple of more slabs like that, maybe like that and add flooring so you'll see oh so i select 
probably 10 floors now and it should run through all of them uh, so anyway let's wait until it will generate all of these floors so currently I'm just creating um, warped double T's here so based on warp double T's I create supports but uh, warp double T's are not good for the drawings so later on we'll uh, see how to solve it all right so I have just created some uh, slabs for the ramp right it goes like that just down because I have um, different um, boundary I have slope to that direction but um, span direction is to that side so my slabs are distributed in that direction but the slope is in the other direction they are not warped, they are just distributed along the ramp. All right, so uh, that's some of the modeling uh, of the slabs. Okay, um, next thing, maybe I can just move this one. Uh, next, what I want to show you is um, how to insert connections for elements. So for that, I will um, go here and select a couple of these walls. And I will go to Smart Connection Solution, which has Configuration Window. In Configuration Window, I can define what kind of line-based or point-based families should be placed on my host element. So my host element could be floor, uh, wall, or roof, or part, or any of these. And I can distribute elements in, um, in this kind of way, right? I select the family which I want to place. So I have um, these families in my project. Uh, you can use your own families because these are just the simple phase-based families. Um, I define where to place it, um, this, how to distribute that by gravity point or by simple rules. And then I have some um, special rules to find other elements around and only based on that place my connections. So when I have these configurations and I'll, I have these walls selected, I will say I want to insert elements. Um, all right. Um, the configuration which I want to use here is this one. So let's do that. So it's running through these uh, six walls and it's just placing all of these connection elements. All right, I have some warnings, but I know why, so I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, I will isolate these walls, and you see the result now. Um, so, a couple of comments about it. So, at the bottom, I have these elements uh, and this one, right? So, this one is cutting out my wall, uh, and then I have corbels. And corbels, as you see, they are placed at the bottom of my um, double T, warped double T. Because this element, uh, well, inside the warped double T, I have these uh, circles and I can snap to them. Uh, these circles are just uh, families and I can find them with uh, this tool. So I can find um, this circle family and place my corbel only at that location. So I can make this kind of configuration. That's why it's automatically finding the position where uh, core bills should be, where the plates should be, uh, where the loose plates maybe should be placed, right? So that's why all of these walls now have these core bills created. Uh, so that's one of the examples, right? I'm just gonna do it like that. Uh, then uh, let's move on over here. Uh, I have some walls which I want to also place connections. So, okay, let's insert elements on these walls. So I define configurations of walls in such a way that if I have end connection between walls, I want to have one detail. If I have corner connection, I want to have other details. And you will see that over here I have this one like end connection of wall to wall, right? So I have these elements and then it's corner connection. So I have these plates uh, distributed like that. Then some details again at the bottom. And then I have some um, 
detail set at the top, some pads if I want to go into this kind of detailed modeling, right, in Revit, so I can have quantities, I can have locations, and so on. And all of these elements are just families, as I said, if I will edit this family, you'll see that this is just a simple extrusion, right? Um, I can modify and make it however I want and, and place it, okay, place it wherever I want, right? So I'm not going to modify this one, of course, because this is how it should be. Um, all right, let's 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 select these uh, floors uh, or stair landings, I call them, right? Because uh, actually it's a system family floor in Revit, but anyway, I can place some connections on them. And uh, so now I just placed them along this per like perimeter, right? Uh, but what I want to show is that, for example, if I'll click on modify for this wall, again, modify, update, delete, always we have this. So I'll go to this tab and you'll see I have many details, different kind of elements, right? And over here, I will turn on additionally this tab, so I'll make it green, so it should start working now. And it will place this plate only if it will find other plates uh, to the left and right side. So when I click on update, you'll see what's gonna happen. It will run again and it will try to find uh, these plates and, and distribute my new elements. All right, uh, so what I have here, this one, you see it's placed at the location point of this plate. So I automatically got these plates. Of course, these are, like I said, standard families. So it means that you can, um, I don't know, um, move it update it and so on, right? Or just place manually if you want to on the other side additional, which is like no need to create configuration, right? You just can drop it uh, with Revit as well. But let's say 90% of detail or 70% of uh, like if you have 10,000 details in this model, uh, so it's worth it to save time, right? Then we have a slab on the top, uh, and I want to do details here as well. So, um, yep, this configuration, insert. And now I'm placing some line-based families over here. So I'm placing this cutout uh, along this edge and along this edge to this point. And also I'm dropping the, these elements, but these are placed only at the location of these which were inserted in the wall. So if you'll notice that I will say like, um, I want to have this one additional for some reason for this wall uh, and I want to move it actually because something is not okay. So if I'll do that and I run the update um, of elements of this floor, So let's see what's going to happen. And you see it added two of these and this one was moved actually to the side. And the reason for that, because again, I have this smart uh, possibility to find to top and bottom directions for this element. So if I find this element, I place this one. If I don't find it, I don't place this element. So that's the way you can really automate a lot. Um, all right, so let's let's do a couple of things over here as well. Uh, I'm just gonna click on auto insert because I already assigned configurations to these um, columns. And I have here, um, okay, so I see that um, I have placed the configuration which I want, but actually what I would like to do before that, I want to, uh, insert some details into these elements. So that's what I will do now. Um, select these. Can we do that? Auto insert. Uh, okay. <laughs> so what I do now, I just place some connections at my walls. Because I use walls for spandrel walls, as well you can use uh, beams, 
depends on the project on situation because it, it in both ways it's quite okay um all right actually i should have used different configuration here because i don't need corbel here i have used uh, line based corbels uh, to place on these walls and then i used also line based elements um to cut the exterior side to make some architectural uh, look right and then i have this corbel and the wall and i have these lifting points based on gravity point uh, because the software is calculating gravity point of the wall and placing these as well uh, based on my configurations and then this one at the top of uh, warped double t right um, and then let me show that if i am gonna update um, all right, let's update elements for these columns and you'll see what's uh, what will be the difference. Okay, so you'll see I got now these new elements because I have these at my walls, so I place these at my column automatically. Um, so the column looks like that probably now. All right, it has some cutouts at the bottom, it has uh, also cut out from the bottom plate and additionally you might wonder why do i have this orange thing around my column uh well that that's um it's a void which i place at the bottom of the column and the reason for that because i want to cut my uh slabs so what i do here i just select these select this void one more time and i cut that right so I want to have this uh, slap boundary um, in a good way, right? So that's why I do that. Uh, this void is automatically reading the size of a column. At least in my case, it's reading the size of a column and it's um, it has some values what I want to have offsets from the column sides, right? So again, it's quite easy to manipulate. Um, if I would like to have here, I have cut um, walls over here so also I can use similar approach I can place them manually of course but um, let me find this one all right so can I can I do that all right so here I have void family again uh, which I will move slightly over here and maybe uh, okay what's the size of it that's um it's based on the actually on instance parameters so i can just modify that easily right so i can okay one more time just by one inch and you will see what i have here so i have this void uh created over here right so again the purpose of it is to uh, okay, so it's not really visible. Good. So uh, what I will do, I will orient to view again one more time to second floor, for example, and let's let's cut these um, floors again. So cut, select. Uh, I have this void, right, and then I'm making it like that. So I have this boundary of uh, elements. So at least that's the idea of what what I will do. Uh, okay, so we are moving forward with smart connections uh, quite quickly. Let's see one more example. I have uh, these slabs, double T slabs. So I'm going to select a couple of these here and these here. And what I will do, I will uh, insert, auto insert elements. So I want to have some details at these double t slabs so these are um, just regular flat slabs you see i have uh, some connections at the bottom at the top uh, at the connection with another one with one another and then i have these warped double t's and it looks pretty much the same mm, over here so good um i think that's um enough with the details uh or we can insert one more here um we can move on to the other tools all right so 
that's the way um, reinforcement so I'm gonna use reinforcement from here as well because um, currently I'm using some better versions to test it but um, the tool has uh, configurations where you define what kind of rebars should be created for external internal reinforcement how to go around openings how to go around uh, vault perimeter and so on so we make these configurations and in a similar way uh, you use link and you assign configuration to the wall for each layer you can define different configurations so for this layer it's very thin layer for architectural purpose so i don't make reinforcement for that one but i insert reinforcement for this one right so i choose this configuration for reinforcement and then i i'm gonna select a couple of these maybe and create rebar So that's the result, it's very quick. We have O-shape, we have longitudinal reinforcement, I have here U-shape bars also distributed. Um, and in this case, I selected to create rebar steps. If you want to, you can uh, create them as a separate bar, so there is an option for that. Um, and then we have beams, right? So we have beams as well. Uh, we can use in a similar way beam tool it looks like that it has also configurations but it's uh, of course it's different we we work with three different shapes um, we have cover settings main reinforcement settings right so up oh, sorry wrong configuration this is um, um, metric units and this one should be all right so I have some settings for main reinforcement and for stirrups, right, in, in different directions, um, what should be the size and so on, offsets and in uh, different directions and so on. And and O-shape, U-shape or inverted U-shape or I-shape rebars could be made. You can define how it should be. Uh, but anyway, um, let's select this one. Maybe I'll isolate that actually and let's try to uh, create rebar for this one. Uh, because I ha I have already linked configuration here I have beam link so for this uh, for this element right I can just select the configuration which I want to use so in this case I have this kind of result I have quite a lot of strands at least I call them strands right um, in Revit it's actually structural rebar but I give it a name as a strand as we don't have a separate option for that right so that's what i do here and then i had all of these elements distributed in different steps it's uh, quite complex this beam has quite a lot of elements i would say uh, but it could be of course uh, much more simple for example if i'll go back here you see i have used here walls with corbels and it's um, quite okay i've been using that for a while now but on the type i also um, just draw the structural framing element and then again I can um, create configuration I can link the configuration which I want and then I click on create uh, and this one is quite simple it has uh, just a step of O shape reinforcement some longitudinal reinforcement and so on and also it has these uh, stirrups in that direction as well so um, Beams is, is probably for parking buildings quite good when you, when you have let's say for ramp I have in this case walls uh, but sometimes you will probably have just L-shaped beams on the on the columns or between the columns uh, so if they have the slope so it's um, more comfortable to use beams than walls so but but both ways is possible depends on situation right so um oh so these uh, walls they don't they don't have any reinforcement let's create something for these as well so it should analyze also the boundary of these uh, walls and then based on that create reinforcement 
All right, we can cut it out for a while. Uh, and then here we have openings, so that's why I have diagonal bars. I have straight bars around openings as well. I have uh, boundary bars over here. Then I have um, vertical bars going for the full size of the wall. So it could be, again, like um, strands if you use that in the United States, I think. Um, and then horizontal bars some kind of mesh so this is solid one wall but it could be a sandwich wall and you can use two configurations at once uh, for each wall right uh, actually you can see some webinars where i talk more about it in details uh, but that's reinforcement right um, so we have two tools for walls and for beams now next step would be to create sharp drawings but um, before that I would like to renumber them because now renumber them give them mark values because um, assembly name will be based on the um, mark of the wall and currently it's empty uh, so we have like I'm gonna select all of this type of uh, walls and then I go to sort mark tool which has the option to uh, renumber grids, rooms, sheets, and uh, elements numbering, right? So you can choose any of these. Uh, you can choose text parameter where you want to put information. So I choose mark. And then uh, I can group filter, uh, define parameters which will have influence on number. I can sort them by level, by location, by any of instance or type parameters. And then uh, at the end, I can also define what should be actually put into that parameter. So in this case, I put the number from level parameter. I have prefix, then number, and then the number of panel. And I save these configurations in my computer and I use it everywhere in all the projects. So when I click on OK, so some of them will have same mark values and if you'll take a look now this one it has L3 so from level 3 and then it has uh, some number based on the sequence of numbering right um, the one I have chosen and then over here this one is level 2 and okay this is beam actually not wall but this one should be level 4 so you see I remember to all of these elements and now I can start creating uh, sharp drawings. So for that, I'm going to select this wall in my case, and then I will go to Smart Assembly. Smart Assembly is a tool to create sharp drawings. So we have configuration, sharp drawing configuration, where we define how to create drawings, um, what should be created, right? So. Let's open this one. And I have uh, different configurations in my computer. Uh, here I define what views should be created and how many of these views should be created, right? I pick the view, um, I pick the name for the view, I pick the visibility settings, and then I pick the dimension rules. So dimension rules is defined here. So we define how it should be. Um, how to dimension cuts, openings, um, how to dimension metal details, rebars, um, what kind of information should be placed uh, at the dimension line and how to place it on each side or just connect them and so on. Um, here we have like an extension tool which extends this um, dimension rules and it has really flexible uh, rules here how to dimension elements we have different categories what should be dimensioned you select the category and then you say um, where to snap the dimension line so you can snap to solid lines you can snap to location point model lines reference planes um, where to place that um, dimension at the bottom at the top and so on vertical horizontal dimension whichever you want what kind of dimension style you can you, you want to 
use for details, what kind of dimension style do you want to use for the structural framing elements if you have them in the view. Uh, so you make a lot this kind of configurations and um, from my experience I see that people use this tool in Australia and United States and Canada and Norway so it's very flexible and meets a lot of different kind of standards and manufacturer requirements um, for the view of a uh, of sheet, of the drawings, of the documentation. And then we have tab for schedules. Um, we create what kind of schedule do you want to create uh, here and what kind of sheets should be here. So um, title block and uh, what should be sheet template. Currently I cannot select sheet template because assembly is not created. So that's what I will do now. I will select this element and say I want to create assembly. Create assembly, select the configuration which I want to use. So this one, click on create. And it, what it will do now, it will do a lot of things for you. Uh, you will get all the hosted elements in one assembly. You don't need to pick this one, add to assembly. You don't need to add reinforcement to assembly. I selected only wall and all the rest elements the tool will take into assembly, add them automatically. Now, next thing, it will calculate assembly mass. It will put the gravity point if you want to, and it will uh, create views, the ones I defined, views and schedules, of course, and then uh, place automatic dimensions. So this is gravity point. Um, if I'll select um, element, you will see that I have assembly mass, which I can add into the schedules and then put them on the sheet, right? So let's take a look what was created actually at the bottom of our project browser. Uh, assemblies, this is the name of assembly, the same as the mark, right? And then I have this uh, 3D view, I have uh, bottom view, I have front view. Um, the front view gives me the total measures, um, at least in, in my current settings, that's the way I get. I have dimensions for these elements, I have dimensions for the plates, I have dimensions for other type of the plates, uh, and dimensions for the corbel, so in both directions. I have some notes about it, so I choose to show the uh, type of uh, information. Um, and then let's do like this, let's go to the sheet, and then uh, let's drag this one. Like I have this view, then I say I want to have this one as well. I want to align it with my uh, wall view. And then I'll drop a couple of more views over here. And then I want to have this schedule. And this schedule actually has only one cell. So it's a uh, assembly mass. And this one gives me assembly um, volume of elements and then I have wall schedule if I need that right so for example I can do that um, then as well I will do whatever what I will do I'll drag legends legend over here so legend it's a simple note in this case um, some information right or it could be some kind of for example I'm going to remove these, no titles, can I select these, no titles, good, and then um, next sheet, front view bar, this view, I want to have like one for formwork, one for reinforcement, so give me that view, All right, and then I have rebar schedule, right, and then maybe I have uh, some kind of another legend over here so uh, this one okay uh, this is gonna be a uh, schedule view and the legend so I have this uh, defined in my configuration that I want to keep these legends as well and I want to place them on all sheets basically that's why these legends here are selected and then what I will do I'll go here to the sheet templates and I already can select that these sheets should be used as a sheet template for next assemblies. So when I save this, um, all right, actually, can we just create rebar for this one as well? It will be more interesting maybe just to see the same 
similar result, right? So for example, I select this element and um, can we just do something a little bit different than, than that one and this one. So I select two walls now and I say I want to create assemblies. Oops. So which one doesn't have mark value? Okay, this wall and this wall. Can I select these walls? Ah, sorry about that. I'm gonna isolate these. Uh, let's take a look. This one has mark value and this one has mark value. All right, so it should be working. Ah, so probably I selected something else. All right, so then I select these walls now, create assemblies. So what will happen is that it will create two assemblies. Uh, Revit would create one assembly for you. Now, when I do that, smart assemblies is, create, is working like with one element, right? So I get the assembly of that one and get assembly of that one. Uh, there is also different kind of workflow. I mean, if you need to have a couple of elements in one assembly, then you can just simply create assembly of the element and then you can apply all these configuration views and dimensions on that assembly so create assembly with revit let's say with from four walls and then apply all of these configurations from smart assemblies but um, in, in my building there's it's not the case i don't have this kind of situations and it's um, just depends on the, your type of constructions all right, so what I'll do, I'm gonna take a look what was created. So now I have this one created and you'll see that actually I can go straight to the form work uh, sheet and you'll see that I have same views. I have uh, same schedules, I have legend and then if I'll go here and it's the same, I have all the reinforcement right and and then uh, at the bottom I have the same for another panel for this panel as well I have some uh, drawings and all the reviews are placed on the sheet based on the sheet template so that's the way you create um, the shop drawings maybe I'll just show you a couple of ah so maybe another example here I'm just gonna pick one of these and create assembly Okay, so this one actually was not renumbered, it's different type. So that's why I'm gonna select, no, it was not previous selection. So I'm gonna select this one and add some kind of mark value um, manually. And then I will create assembly, okay. So next uh, configuration, it's this one, create. And um, let's wait a little bit. It's creating views, the one I have in my configurations. And you'll see uh, the wall is vertical in this view, but in my configurations, it's um, it's over here. And then if I will go to front view, you see it's already rotated. So I have this option in my configurations, right? Um, and then again, I have total measure, I have um, opening dimensions, I have dimensions for other details and, as well. So I have uh, front view, I have details and so on. And the same workflow could be applied. I create the sheet, I create, um, apply that for other elements. Now, if we'll take a look to the, to the one I have created here, the double T slabs. So if I select this warped double T and I select this one, uh, which is not warped, and we'll try to only with a slope. Okay, so so let's select them one more time, and I'm gonna isolate these. So it will be uh, let's call it. Uh, for TT, right, and um, identity mark and just simple DD. Okay, 
and then let's try to create assemblies for these um, assembly 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 double t slap let's create this let's use this configuration so you'll see what's the result so basically if it's only if it's only the slab uh, with a slope right uh, like it's it's it is now it's just with a slope in the model so the tool will automatically rotate origin and if we go here it, to the front view you'll see that actually it's horizontal uh, the tool automatically rotates that we have a horizontal view we have um, nice dimensions for the details at the ends at the beginning uh, we have some notes we have total measures uh, we have dimension for these for this stem and so on right uh, but if we we'll go to warp double T and if we'll try to look at the drawings oops oh so you will see that on the top view for example I don't have any 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 dimensions actually and if we'll take a look to the section view it's warped right like it you cannot change that because this element is um, it's just twisted you cannot uh, make it flat in the drawing so you need to have another element um, so for that what I will do I will do like this I will um, yeah again I probably um, orient view to the second floor only because it will be easier to to see all right so then I have these um, these elements so these are warped double T's what I will do I will select them I will uh, copy them I will align them to the same place and then next thing while they are still selected I will say I want to change FM number value. FM number is special value just to renumber them and to track the warping and so on. But if I make it zero, they are not warped anymore. So they will be like uh, just uh, slabs with a slope. So let's try to see what do I have here now. I'm gonna just again cut it out a little bit and I think we should do like that yeah so now it's it's visible better so what I have here is that I have warped uh, double T and I have supports for this double T so I, I see where it should be and I already placed them so that's cool but for drawings I need another element so I will I made these elements for drawings and then elements for drawings they need actually all the plates and so on so that's what I will do I will uh, create and insert I will insert details to these structural framing elements so I insert connections for them so yeah you will see that um, now I have this one inserted at the flat version of my double T. Now um, sometimes it might be confusing like you have two elements and then um, to select them uh, to work with them it's it could get hard right so uh, what you can do you can select these elements and you can uh, one of the options would be move them to the design set so I move a uh, warped double T's because if I add them to the design set in Revit uh, I cannot select them anymore uh, if I am in main model but um, if I would switch to another design option I can select only these which is in, in this model right I cannot select any other elements but I cannot create assemblies from this element you see it's not active so it means only warped elements could be moved to uh, another design option so that would be one of the ways and another way would be 
just to use filters. For example, I have filter and then I say that uh, if FM is equals to zero, then it's flat, right? So I made this kind of filter. For, for example, I will switch off warped double T so I don't see them, right? And I can start working with just um, these elements. And um, But basically this is working 3D view, so maybe I can leave them. But then I can have separate 3D views, one for warped double T, so I can easily select their connections, their position of these elements and so on. And another one with just a flat version of double T's, right? So I have them only in this position. So um, just to create sharp drawings, I can see that I have details already and then I can stop, start creating uh, drawings for these. Of course, um, well, is, is that you need to cut these as well because these are different elements, so you'll have to cut them again um, with these elements, right? So I have this slab like that, right? But anyway, the idea is like that. You cannot create anyway drawing from the warped element, so we need to figure it out how to do that. So uh, I would suggest to create another element over here and then place um, connections and so on. And because now it's, um, Oops, sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm just gonna rotate this one. Like that. Uh, so isolate that, you'll see how does it look actually. It's just a, a slope and it's not warped, right? It's equal, both, both edges are just horizontal. So um, yeah, go to smart assemblies, create assemblies and then and then again, <laughs> I did the same stuff. So I need to do some mark value over here. So uh, DT flat, I'm just gonna call it some typo. All right, and then create assembly. Uh, they have the same configuration. Um, okay, it's just um, because of my special uh, details inside this family, I have some of um, informational messages from Revit but basically now if I'll move down so it's just isolate view right so it doesn't really make change here so then I have this uh, element with dimensions so that's what I get here and then I can drag them drop them on my on my sheet and start creating um, drawings for them all right, I have details, something like that, and I can uh, drop some kind of legends, maybe like this one or this one. So I would say legends are quite good for typical details and the notes. Uh, these, um, like you can make a section for each, uh, but um, double T slab, real sections, but um, because these are 2D views, but uh, then uh, you'll have to do a lot of job, right? If you want to represent that. So I think it's quite uh, normal and, and good way to use 2D details. Or also they don't represent what's actually model it, but I think uh, that's an effective way to do that. Just use these 2D details for uh, typical situations, right? And for non-typical, of course, you can make sections or detail views in Revit. So um, I guess that's some, let me think if I missed something. I think this is it. Um, we have like floor panel layout tool or, uh, but we are not showing here today. You can, you can review other webinars if interested but the main idea was to cover all the process and then uh, talk about warped double t's as well all right so okay a couple of words before i will go to your questions um so what do i have uh free trial right so free trial you can go to our web page choose products uh choose precast concrete um get free trial over here click on this one 
over here you will be able to select version 2021 is coming up it will be available soon but currently you can choose from these options and um, uh, download this tools for BIMDoc and then from from it you can install pregas concrete and we'll uh, get in touch and and uh, for the trial okay all right guys so this is it uh, that's it from me and from my colleagues so thank you everyone and have a good day bye bye aga gad building bim together